CrowdStrike is a tough one. You know, this is a company that is still growing, even though they had a hit. Um, and expectations are that they will continue to grow their revenues. But it's a company that's not yet making profits. And the market has not been kind to unprofitable companies. And even though this segment is unquestionably poised for continued growth and the platform relationships that they signed with um, Amazon Web Services um, and with the hardware provider Dell, I mean, these are great ways to sell their product. And they will eventually become profitable. Profitable, but in the meantime, you know, they are just not hitting the mark. And I don't think that the market is going to be very kind to them in the, as we go through this next round of, of expected and, quite frankly, unexpected continuation of, of rate hikes. Yeah, so you're steering clear of it for now. Um, you know, the P.E. is still 67, so it's not exactly a bargain. Uh, we'll see if that improves. In the meantime, we've got Brown Foreman. You know, obviously different story, but kind of, you know, similar. I mean, the, the shares spiked during the pandemic, but they're now back to roughly where they were pre-COVID. So what's the next catalyst for the stock here? And they've got supply chain and they've got inflation and they've got, you know, the changing consumer and all of this to worry about. Yeah, I mean, they're getting hit on the inflation side and you're seeing it in their margins. But this is a company that actually had higher profit margins or higher operating margins than their uh, peers. And so even though their margins are falling, they're still actually pretty healthy. They're at 30 percent. So that's not bad. Um, the, the bigger challenge that you have is that this has been a very high quality stock, a defensive stock. When people get uh, when when you get a recession, when you get a pandemic, people drink. Um, we saw that during the pandemic and we would expect it to go on. But it is highly priced. That quality is already priced into the stock. I mean, this is a stock that we own at Lido Advisors because we do think it is a high quality stock. And mm. if you think that if you believe Powell that he's just going to keep going until eventually everybody loses their jobs, well, then you would you would be willing to pay for that quality. And so that's really what investors have to weigh is how much is quality worth right now. All right. Let's turn to this sort of Adidas and Nike story. Adidas reports before the bell tomorrow. They've got the celebrity collaborations to worry about. Everyone wants to know what they're going to do with all that Yeezy inventory now, product innovations. They've got a new CEO. But if you go back to the recent October lows, both of these stocks have actually seen a pretty nice pop. Nike's up about 50 uh, percent during this time. Adidas, too. Adidas, though, is still 50 percent off the peak 21 levels, while Nike only about 30 percent below those highs. So what what would you do with these kinds of stocks in this uh, this climate? Look, this is a challenge. First and foremost, you have to remember that this is this is the kind of apparel and the kind of uh, buy that is not necessary. Right. And you have, you know, add to that the fact that they're going to lose a billion dollars of projected revenue um, off of the uh, off of, you know, off of dropping Kanye. Um, and that that's going to hurt them about a half a billion dollars worth of profitability. That's not a great situation to be going into potentially a worse recession than we were expecting. I think most investors were expecting a very short, shallow recession. Mm. Um, Powell's comments today don't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't support that. That's um, really so interesting. Can you I, can you just highlight that? Because I was going to ask you about the broad markets, Gina. I mean, is that what you think the main takeaway is from this morning? I do think that. I mean, what what Powell is saying is um, that that he is going to keep uh, raising rates until he sees um, inflation back off. And the problem that we see with that is that what's driving that inflation is a shortage of human beings, of people, right. of, of, job, of people who can work the jobs. And so if, in fact, he does that, he could plunge us into a pretty significant recession. And it's just currently not priced for that. Most investors are pricing for a short, shallow recession. Mm -hmm. um, a Fed-induced recession could be very painful. Well, that's so interesting. That's kind of actually, to me, the, the headline of the whole show. Uh, we'll leave it there. Gina, thanks for your time today. We appreciate it.